Welcome to the traditional shakamaki lesson. I am the teacher, Daniel Nyohaku Sargal, and over here, and I am a student. So this format has been going on for generations. In fact, my teacher was Rani Nyohaketsu Selden. His teacher was Yodo Korahashi I. His teacher was Jin Yodo. And on and on we go back to history, one to one. And what we do is we sit across a small table, we look at the music, it's upside down to the teacher, the student learns how to read it. And so I would say when you go to your first lesson, maybe you look at a fingering chart first, and here's a fingering chart, and get to know just the basic notes, just uh, four or five holes, that's enough to get started, that you won't be lost, totally lost, because uh, it can be intimidating, so have fun. And what I'm going to do today is show you how this works. I'm just in this upright position and my spine is erect. This is called a seiza position. You don't really need a pillow. You can sit like this. After a while, you won't feel your feet. But if you practice enough, um, you might feel them again. There's also another solution for seiza sitting. There's something called a seiza bench. Like so. And if you have to, uh, sit on a chair. That's fine. But Shakuhachi lessons are traditionally taught just like this. And now we're going to go on to the lesson itself. So here's the table you're presented with. You've got your shakuhachi, your 1.8 shakuhachi, which is a D. Your teacher has brought you some tea. Keep the whistle wet and also relax and you get to chat and meet your teacher a little bit. It's not a school class. We are in rows, in chairs, music stands. It's a very different situation. And so over here, we've got the music, the score, and here's a fingering chart. So let's just say that you're thinking about taking lessons. You've got to know some of the notes. You could play four or five notes just by raising and lowering your fingers on the holes. So a fingering chart will kind of help you along in your first lesson, but it's not absolutely necessary. So now the piece, which is over here, it's called Kimigayo. It's the Japanese national anthem. So what I'm doing is pointing out the very first note of the piece. Here, second note, third note, fourth note, and the breath mark. And so um, what happens in Japanese music, which is very interesting, before you just play it cold, you sing it along with your teacher. And not only do you sing it along with your teacher, you tap it out with your hands on your knees, like this. And the beat is one, two, one, two. And so, uh, well, this is my right hand. It's the right beat, and this is the left beat. One and two and one and two and right and left and right and left. So all traditional Japanese music fits this format. And that's that. So let me decode this. This is the name of the piece. This is the very first note. And this little symbol is a low octave symbol. And the first note is re, tsu, re, Chi, re, chi, re. And so your eye follows this zigzag pattern, which has just been added to this notation, just for this one case. This zigzag pattern is where your eye goes while you're following the general outline of the notes going down. And so it's a right and left, right, left beat. Uh, now, when you get to here, the note has an in between note. This is See, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. There's an extra note right here. Because of that extra note, it's a half note. So it's on the way from this note to that note, there's another note. So um, it's pretty much a matter of following these dots with your eyes on the way down. Now, this note here has a shaded hole, which I'll explain in a minute. So we're going to... Sing this piece and tap it on our legs.
Roe, Kiri, to Ray, to Ray, Rory, Rory, G, Ray. And there you have it. Now, the little symbols on the side, this is a low octave symbol. As you work through here, this is a shaded note, which means that it's a half a step lower. This is a su, it's called a su chu mary. It, mary means flat and chu means middle. It's a little flat. So when you come along through this music, if you happen to see a high octave symbol, which is this, and you're playing in a low octave, that means you move to the high octave. So this is a row in the high octave. And uh, these are breath marks. You may need to take a lot of breaths, almost a breath at every other note. So there's a lot going on here. It's a simple piece, but not that easy to play on the shakuhachi. What we're going to do is sing the piece. And to sing a piece is not what most of us want to do. And I remember definitely not ever wanting to sing a piece when I was a child. So here we are, uh, your teacher is asking you to sing along. It's not important if you can sing how you sing, just so you can hear this song without any pressure about what to do. Just listen to the song. Way to Here's the Ray. Here's the Sue. Here's the Chu Mary with the partially covered hole. And then the Ro. So Ray. Sue. Sue. Chu Mary. And now the Ro. So my head is just straight and I'm blowing.
and of course Chi. And so what you get to do is listen. You, you listen to see if you should cover just a little bit or a little bit more. It's kind of up to you because everybody's lips are different, everybody's flute is different, and when you blow into a different angle, you get a different effect. Well, I hope that helps. So say this was your first shakuhachi lesson. Well, that's a lot to absorb, but uh, here's some things that uh, will help you absorb it. Here's some, uh, some advice. Uh, try practicing every day. Uh, don't try going crazy at the beginning. Try 10 minutes. Uh, if you have the breath power, okay, 15 minutes, but that could be a lot. Try playing every day. If you can develop a daily routine, then it would become a habit, and you will need it as a habit because there'll be sometimes you're busy and you'll just forget, and then you haven't played three or four days, and you'll start to forget many of the things that you teach you went over. Because when you looked at the things that I went over in this lesson, there were quite a lot, and uh, it would be a one-week lesson. You'd have a whole week to work on these little things, and when you come up with questions, get a pencil, uh, write in pencil on the notation, what is this, what is that, uh, and your teacher will guide you along, play along with you simultaneously, maybe drowning you out, but remember that when you cannot play a note and it's just coming out air, your teacher is carrying that note for you. So basically, you're piggybacking and going along with the teacher. And that goes on for years. Uh, amazingly, uh, you try and try and try, and uh, you may be doing this for months and you can't even play the scale. Some people don't even get a sound for, for weeks, maybe months. So don't worry. Uh, there's nobody there except you and your teacher, and they want you to succeed. And also, uh, it's important to have a good time. Now, one thing I found is at the beginning, your mouth is dry, uh, you need to have your tea handy. Uh, that's a good thing to practice. What I would do is make tea, put it down on a little table, set on my music, and I would make a little event and I would practice. And so over the years, I was able to develop better practice routines and I was practicing an hour a day, which I did for many years and uh, many, many years. And then I was able to get further along because if you only practice twice a week, say, um, it would take you so many, so much longer than if you played seven times a week. I mean, well, how many times? That's four or five times longer. So um, try playing every day and uh, you'll exceed uh, what, what you thought you could do. And now the Shakuhachi has a funny way of teasing you. You, you hear beautiful sounds that could be made, you, you know, the, the kernel of it. Um, and you want it to come back again, but it doesn't, and so you have to reach for it. You have to keep following, keep following, and so it's a difficulty, but there's so much beauty in it. And when you play, you feel the flute vibrating in your hands, you become relaxed with the deep breaths, and it's something that worked for me to fit into my lifestyle, coming home, say, <laughs> from a commute and sitting down and, oh, I don't want to hear uh, something active, I, I just want to be chill. and. Uh, the shakuhachi fits that very well. And actually, you'll be almost meditating by doing the deep breaths. In fact, I would recommend starting with deep breaths and deep tones, long tones, before you play the piece. And that way, you can get yourself warmed up and get yourself on the way. And then take out the piece. And if it gets exasperating, then stop. Uh, you may have a bad day. Okay, then stop. But give it a try. And I found that even having a bad practice time, I'm not getting a sound, uh, my mind is on other things, I can't seem to enjoy being in the moment. Uh, okay, I gave it a shot. The next day, when I take out my music, I find that I know that music a little bit better, or my sound is a little bit better. And so it's a, it's a very fascinating experience. And you're training your mind in a way, uh, you're improving yourself, and uh, I would highly recommend it. Uh, it is habit forming. I'm talking about creating a habit, but it is actually habit forming because you get this wonderful feeling when you play the shakuhachi. And uh, don't mind if people don't like the sound of it. Um, they will hear one day the beauty that you hear uh, because it, you know what you're reaching for. And when you can reach it, uh, it's a wonderful fulfillment. So I'd like to say uh, good luck on your shakuhachi journey.